Hi, welcome to the 3D Pen Den. So now that we know how to make any angle we need, by the way, if you missed the video on how to make the angle support tool, check it out because we'll need it for this project. The link is in the description as usual. It's time to make the platonic solids, as promised. Let's start with the most intimidating one because it has the most faces, icosahedron. Platonic solids belong to this exclusive club of five extremely well-behaved solids. By well-behaved, I mean they are all regular with the same sized faces, sides and angles. Just a pleasure to work with. Perfect starters for polyhedra making adventures. We will need to set our angle jig to 138 degrees, which is a dihedral angle of icosahedron. Or so says Wikipedia. And I know it's true because I tried it and guess what? It really makes one. Then we'll need a pattern. You can get the polygon pattern set from the 3D Pen Den Etsy store, which includes a page of equilateral triangles already pre-divided for various situations. Or better yet, make your own. You will learn more that way. It's not hard. I am starting my equilateral triangle with side of 2 inches. Don't get tempted to make it too tiny or too huge for your first try. Making miniature things and working large both come with their own set of complications. So keep it just right, like Goldilocks. Somewhere between 2 and 4 inches. I will also connect the corners with the middle of the opposite sides which will give me the exact middle of my triangle. So I can show you also an alternative way of working with this shape later. You can stick this pattern right under your work surface, but I am going to fold it and cut out two triangles to use one on my angle jig. So you can see the alignment better in the video. You don't strictly need it, but it helps to keep the faces aligned and organized. Now, icosahedron has 20 faces, which eventually come together in 12 corners or vertices. Like so. is also supposed to have 30 sides and in here lies our problem if we wanted to just make 20 triangles and connect them. It would double up the lines all around. So to avoid that issue we'll use the rolling method in which you roll your project around so each side gets its turn to lay flat on the work surface. That way, you can make only as many sides as needed at each stage. And also avoid any issues with gravity distorting the plastic before it had a chance to cool and solidify. Tape your first triangle to the angle support over the blue pattern. And then align it with the blue pattern under your work surface. Tape even the angle jig down to make everything as stable as possible. At this point, it is obvious that we will need to make only two sides of the second triangle because one line is already there. Give it a second to cool and take it off. We have 
the phase one and two of our icosahedron joined together at 138 degree angle. Good start! Now tape one of them over the pattern on the angle support again and add two more lines to make the next triangle on the work surface continuing from what is already there. Three faces done and repeat. Four faces done. Now we need only one line to make face 5 and if we make the full three line triangle again we can also add face 6 at the same time. Two faces for the price of one move. Face is done, 14 to go. So just repeat and repeat. In repeating and repeating, I learned a lot. Not just about platonic solids, but about geometry in general, and realized it's really hard to learn about three dimensional topics from 2D pictures. The computer 3D renderings have come a long way, but it is still like watching a cookie baking video as opposed to actually baking a cookie. I know you can print icosahedron on a 3D printer and it may look cleaner and you don't even have to be there while it's printing. But that's the rub. If you are not there, you don't learn anything. What I'm trying to say is that 3D pens are super useful learning and teaching tools for introducing the third dimension. And there are a lot of disciplines out there that could benefit from taking 3D notes. But back to the icosahedron at hand. As the shape starts to round up and enclose the space, it will get harder to access the inside with the pen and uncomfortable lines often mean messy looking lines. At that point it is easier to make the two lines you need to add first and then join them to the structure by attaching them to the corners that are already there from the outside. Definitely expect to have to do the last three to four triangles that way. last face where you will need just one line to divide the last two faces from each other.
are done. As with everything, there is always more than one way to accomplish the same thing. One of the things I realized when I started the Platonic Solids project is that all of them, except for the tetrahedron, have parallel opposite faces, with the centers on a straight line directly above each other, which means we can also thread them on the central axis tool. We just need to organize the design around the center of the triangles so it stays attached to the wire. We used this tool in the cube video and many other previous projects. It's well worth making one of these. All you need is a stiff perpendicular wire stuck in some support, maybe a washer, and a strategic hole in your work surface. Here we will need that pattern where do we mark the center of the triangle. And we can connect the triangle to the center either from the corners or middle of the sides or both. Each variation will give us different fun pattern. Just keep it consistent around the shape. Then we'll start this icosahedron in the same way as the other one. Except we need to connect each new triangle to the center in the same way. So it stays on the wire and the pattern is consistent. The advantage of this method, besides of being more precise, is that when you get enough faces done, you can abandon the angle jig and just work by threading the faces onto the wire and completing the opposite ones on the work surface. With the more complex pattern inside the triangles, you may need to resort to making more lines beforehand. And you will also have a bit more outside attaching to do. Here are our results from both methods. The one with more lines will be sturdier and less fragile than the plain one, which helps if you start working bigger. Connecting the center to just the corners gives you a different pattern. With these cool five-pointed stars formed by the segments. Perfect for a Christmas ornament. On the other hand, if you connect to just the center of the opposite sides, you will get a pattern where the centers of the sides are marked case you are planning to attach some more parts to those spots, like if you are planning to stellate your icosahedron. Anyhow, they all look cool and the variations keep it exciting and add a nice variety. Once you get the hang of the basic process, you can go bigger. This one is made from 3 inch sided triangles. And of course, go outward from there, but we'll save this one for the next video. So until then, go and make something! <music>